We have all had that light bulb moment when we thought of something outside the box, even if it wasn't. And this was mine. Putting an HVAC filter on the back of my box fan to filter out the dust particles in the air. I know it's not much, and my light bulb may only be 15 watts, but here is how I did it. And stick around to see what I did to mine that no one else has been doing to theirs. I bought a 20 inch by 20 inch washable filter and began taking apart the fan, making sure to save the front grill and screws for later. Then I measured the front grill and it was 20 and a quarter inches wide and tall. I then grabbed a sheet of three quarter inch plywood that I picked up at the big box store, marked it at 20 and a quarter inches and used my circular saw with a guide to make the cut. And I figured I'd make the next cut on my table saw, but because I bought it at the big box store, it was a little wonky and I didn't feel it was safe to push it through. So I decided to use a sled to make this cut and that worked perfectly. Now that we have our front piece cut, we got to make our sides. And for that, I'm going to base some of my measurements off of the thickness of the uh, box fan itself, which was three and a half inches. So I'm going to need three and a half plus the thickness of the face, which is three quarters of an inch and our filter, which is one inch. Plus I need to have a bracket on the back side of the fan in order to mount these metal brackets too. So I'm going to use a strip of three quarter inch for that as well. And that'll also keep our filter on the back. It'll keep it spaced out so that it won't just get pulled into the fan blades. So for my sides, I'm going to need to cut them at six and three quarters of an inch, which should equal the thickness of three and a half, one inch, our face frame, plus a little bit of thickness on the back because we're going to do three quarters in the front, three quarters in the back, and then our filter is going to slide right in between those two. And this is all going to make sense as I get further on this. Let's rip these down to six and three quarters of an inch. So I set my table saw fence to the width that I needed and ran the plywood through, giving myself four panels for the sides and top. Then I needed to cut the length. So I aligned the face frame with the edge of my sled, since it's already the length I needed, and locked down the stop block. Then I made the cut on two of the side panels, remembering that the other two needed to be an inch and a half longer to overlap the ends. And instead of doing the math and then measuring out the size I needed, I just put two pieces of scrap cutoffs next to one of the sides that I already cut, locked it down, and cut the other two panels. That's right, folks. My head is not just a hat rack. After that, it was time to glue this bad boy together. So I squirt some glue on the edge of the two shorter panels first and pushed it around with my built-in glue spreader and used a couple clamps to hold it in place while I pre-drilled some holes with a countersink bit and then ran in some drywall screws. Yes, I said drywall screws because that's what I had lying around my shop. And let's be honest, this is a fancy box fan, not the Taj Mahal. And what you do to one side, you must do to the other. And don't forget that glue squeeze out. Next, I lathered up the edge with more glue and installed the bottom panel just like I did the others. But with the top, I almost made a disastrous mistake that I caught just in time. All right. So the reason I just wiped the, the uh, glue off is I realized that I made a mistake on this box. I've got the fan is going to sit in here, but I've got to have a way for my uh, filters to slide in and out. And if I had put this piece on here like that, then I wouldn't be able to get my filters in there. So I forgot that I'm supposed to cut this across and then I'm going to use some piano hinge right there to allow this to fold up and down and allow the filter to slide in. But I'm glad I caught it before I glued it in place because that would have been a big mistake. So let's cut it. So to figure out how wide to cut the top panel, I first made a mark at three and a half inches for the space the fan is going to take up. Another mark at four and a quarter inches for the thickness of the inside rail. And that leaves me one inch for the filter and another three quarters of an inch for the back rail. 
Then I measured off the front of the face frame and got five inches. So I headed back to the table saw and ripped it down. Then I could spread out some glue again and finally screw down that top panel. And here's a sneak peek of what it's gonna look like. I think it'll work. Hopefully it won't squeak though. Now it's time to cut out the hole for the fan. To find the center, I just placed a straight edge corner to corner and drew a line. I then measured out the distance I wanted from the center, placed a nail, and using a piece of string and a pencil, I made my circle. Although I messed it up the first time, I eventually got there. Then I drilled a hole and using my jigsaw, I cut out the circle. Now that we've got our hole cut, next step is going to be to take one of these other cutoffs that I had left over and we're going to cut some three quarter inch strips. One of them is going to go right along this edge here and they're going to go down all the way around and that's going to keep our filter from getting pulled into the fan itself. It's also going to give us a bracket to mount our fan on as well. And then we're going to make a couple more strips because then after we've got these ones recessed in here, we're also going to have some strips on this outside here that are going to go around and that's going to keep our filter from falling out. I'm not going to put one running across the top right here because I want to easily be able to grab that filter and, and just pull it right out. So that's next. And back at the table saw, I ripped down seven three quarter inch strips for my rails. Then I set the first one in place, made sure it was in the right spot and marked both sides. I put a bead of glue down, mushed the rail into it, and secured it with screws. Then I placed the outer rail in the same manner. And it's important to wipe off the glue so it won't interfere with the filter when installing it. After those were all installed, I could mark, cut, glue, and screw the bottom and top rails in place. And a quick check to see if the filter was even going to fit. And it did. That's a relief. It, it would have been embarrassing if it didn't. So now that we have a spot for our filter to slide in between, I did notice that when you drop it down in there, it's right at the bottom of this. So I'm going to cut a couple little spacers out of this quarter inch piece of scrap that I had left over. And I'm going to place them down into this groove right here, which will just raise up my filter a little bit. It also has a little bit of play side to side. So I'm going to take a couple pieces of it as well. And I'm just going to glue them right here on the inside and that'll keep it from sliding back and forth. And I think that should be pretty good. So after cutting some spacers, I glued one on each side of the bottom, not, not my bottom, the, the bottom of the filter slide. And I also glued one on each side of the top slides, then used clamps to hold them in place. And while that dries, I could remove the fan from the housing. And for that, I used some metal shears to cut along the edges of the fan bracket into the housing. And I left them a bit long since I wasn't sure how long I needed them to be. And just like that, the fan was free from its incarceration, ready for a new and fulfilling life. After angling the brackets, I then tried to set the fan in place. But after several failed attempts, I realized that I had to take off the bracket from one side set the fan in place, and then reinstall the bracket. I roughly centered the fan and gave it a quick spin to make sure it wasn't going to hit anything. I then drilled two eighth inch holes in all four of the brackets and installed some screws to secure it in place. Next I needed to run the cord and speed control to a spot that was out of the way. So I used some zip ties to secure the cord to the mounting bracket, then I drilled a hole in the side using a Forstner bit and pulled the cord through it. Now this is something that I haven't seen anyone else do. I wanted to install a remote control outlet on the side so I could turn the fan on from anywhere in my shop. I was thinking that at some point I might want to hang it from the ceiling and this would make it much less hazardous to turn on. It only took one screw to hold it in place and I used some of these cable clips to keep the cord from flopping around. And I'll leave a link in the description if you want to pick one of these up too. Now I didn't want to leave a big hole on the side, so I measured and cut down a piece of scrap panel board that I had hidden in a corner somewhere. I slid it down into place and marked the wires. I slid it down into place and marked the wires. 
Then I used the bandsaw to cut out the notch and secured it with screws. After that, I secured the speed control knob with some more cable ties and screws. I then wrapped up the remaining power cord and secured it in the corner with these cable ties. And of course, I made sure to check the fan that it wasn't going to hit anything. Next, I gave it a quick sanding just to clean it up and remove any sharp edges. And I made sure to hit those edges that the filter was going to slide into to make sure it wouldn't catch on anything. And then it was time to install the piano hinge, but I first had to trim it down to length. And I find that using metal shears to cut the hinge works pretty good. And you just pull on the hinge to open the gap. Then I use some side cutters to cut the hinge pin. Then I like to take a file to clean up any sharp edges. And to recess the hinge pin, I just smack it with a hammer and it pushes back in. So I realized I made yet another mistake. When you're putting this piece on here and you got your piano hinge in between, there's two problems. One, it pushes this piece off the edge, but the biggest problem is that when it is closed, or not when it's closed, when it's in the open position, my filter no longer fits in the groove. So what I need to do is I need to take about an eighth inch off all the way across here so that the thickness of the hinge will recess back into the housing and allow my filter to pass in front of it. To figure out how much I needed to take off, I just opened the hinge and marked it with a pencil and then used the table saw to trim it down and a flush trim router bit to fine tune the cut. And of course, test the filter one more time. And I used a self-centering drill bit before installing the screws. If you made it this far in the video, make sure you hit that like button and share with friends. It really helps me out. And folks, I read all of the comments, so leave a comment starting with the word wonky. So I know you made it this far in the video. Okay, now it's time to install the front grill cover by pre-drilling the holes and installing the screws I pulled out of it earlier. And then the moment of excitement when I get to stand back and push the button and see, well, nothing happened because I didn't turn the speed control on that I hid earlier inside. But then it worked perfectly. So there you have it. We've got ourselves a brand new dust filter for our shop. It's got ourselves a little piano hinge lid. You can slide the filter right out wash it all up and then just slide it right back in close it up and then i can mount this anywhere in the shop that i want to now because i can just stand back push a button and it turns on now this particular kit came with three of these so if i wanted to make a couple more i can or i can control something else uh, in the shop as well